Hello and welcome. This is Bhaskar Napte from Pharma Growth Hub, and today we are going to talk about something called as a tapered GC inlet liners. Yes, you must have seen the inlet liners present into the GC injector port, and there could be different designs one can prefer dependent on to the application. Today we will specially talk about the advantages of something called as a tapered GC inlet liners. So first uh, we will uh, start from understanding what is meant by the inlet liner and in the diagram you can see that there is a presence of a glass tube which actually protects the sample from getting in contact with the metal parts of the injector port. So it is very important to understand that this inlet liner must be a inert material. And uh, now these are the two very famous injection techniques like split and splitless. And there is a need of different inlet liner for these two different injection techniques. In today's talk, we will not discuss about the design of liners for split and splitless but uh, we are trying to understand this taper. So what is meaning of a taper? To become gradually narrower to one end. So in these three diagrams, you can see one end has gradually becoming a narrower. So this is a geometry of a taper or this is a taper geometry objects. Now in case of uh, liner or inlet liner, this taper geometry has been used and you can see in the diagram that at the one end the size of the liner has gradually narrowed. So this is called as a taper liner and as there is a taper present at only one end this is a single taper liner. Again there is a availability of a double taper liner where you can see this uh, liner has gradually narrowed at both the ends, hmm? at the both the ends. So this is the double taper liner. Now the topic of today's discussion is why do inlet liners have a taper? What is the purpose of using the taper in the liner? So the first important point, the bottom taper minimizes contact with the metal parts of the inlet and focuses the sample onto the head of the column. So in this particular diagram, you can see the column which is represented over here by the brownish colored uh, line. And here is a taper, you can see over the cursor, near the cursor now. Now what happens because of the cursor, the sample is able to get focused onto the head of the column, isn't it? And also, it minimizes the contact with the metal parts. Now this is the metal body and you can easily see that the size of the sample band has got narrowed because of this narrow taper. The second important reason why you must consider using the taper liner is this one. The top taper aids in minimizing sample flashback. Now this is the top taper, isn't it? And this is the bottom taper. Now if your liner has a top taper, it minimizes the flashback. Now what happens once the sample get injected into the injector port? It undergoes vaporization and hence it increases its volume. Now if your liner is not able to hold this increased volume, your sample along with the diluent can get a black uh, can get a flashback and because of this flashback your sample may travel through this uh, uh, through this inject inlet uh, carrier gas line or maybe it can travel towards the septum perch line this is called as a flashback so because of the flashback you will have the irreproducible results from injection to injection. There could be chance of uh, ghost peak uh, or 
cross contamination so the flashback is not the good for the uh, chromatic uh, the gas chromatography so this top tapper can certainly minimize this flashback because this will avoid the transfer of uh, the solvent or the vaporized sample you know towards the inlet gas line or carrier gas line or the septum purge vent the bottom taper with a narrower inner diameter is recommended to ensure a tight sample band now you can see that if this tap taper has the narrower inner diameter your sample band is certainly going to get tight and because of that you will also end up getting the sharper peaks double taper improves reproducibility from injection to injection because it avoids the loss and it improves the consistency of the sample which is going on to the column especially in case of uh, splitless injection mode now double taper liners are recommended for the following sample or injection modes in case if you have the trace level analysis where the concentration of analyte is very low and this taper design is going to help to achieve the more recovery or transfer of the sample onto the column so it is always preferred for the trace level analysis the splitless mode because of its design it has a very low sample transfer from injector port on to the column because there is no much carrier gas flow available inside the injector port and hence the double taper can help you to improve the vaporization and transfer of the vaporized sample onto the column so it is always preferred to use the double taper liner in case of the splitless mode low boiling point compounds so compounds which are having the low boiling point they will get evaporated very easily and there may be a non homogeneous mixing of your diluent with this low boiling point compounds in case if your diluent is high boiling solvent so this double taper also helps in improving the homogeneity of this vapor and hence it is preferred for the low boiling point compounds see the glass full is also very effective tool to increase the vaporization and homogenization of this entire a uh, sample vapor but in case if a compound is reacting to the glass wool you may not be able to use the glass wool in absence of glass wool there may be chance of uh, lower injection to injection consistency the sample will not get uh, sometimes not get completely vaporized and to avoid this you can use the double taper glass inlet liners so let me also know if you know any another reason why you must consider using the tapered glass inlet liner please let me know in the comment below thank you so much